All right, so enough of the uh, fluffy stuff. Let's do something annoying, shall we? It's currently mid-2000. 13 and all the rage is having songs that break down into uh, annoying sounds that are really massive and have reverbs on them there's not much else going on except for an annoying sound and a kick so uh because we like to be followers and not leaders in our musical journey we are going to do the exact same thing so let's create a super annoying sound shall we now i'm really not sure how we're going to do this i'm thinking we'll probably just use we can try Ultra Beat. We can try, uh, let's try Ultra Beat just for the heck of it. Um, I'll load up Ultra Beat. We're only going to have one thing playing, so I'll just take the normal stereo version of it. Hey, maybe we can just use one of these toms. All right, so what I've done here is I've moved our marker to 17 just so I get something clean to play with. Actually, I'll keep the bass there because we'll just have kick and bass going. So I'll move the kick over, play that. Sure, why not? I'll move that one over and just gonna have that note playing. like that, just to keep things super simple. Yeah, which, uh, which Tom is in tune here? None of them, really. Right, there's a whole whack of things to tune. So there's the meat of it right there. So if we do down to A, come on, there we go. Now it should be in key with our, uh, yeah. We even wanna go up an octave. Yeah, why not? All right, and then this is uh, looking like it's the attack of it. Okay, so here's the uh, the amp envelope. So let's see if we can uh, dirty this up a bit, because currently it's just like a sine wave and not at all annoying so i'm turning on the uh, the crush here and turning up the drive even clip it a bit i don't, know if... I don't really want that bright eq on there we have a bit of that mid boost though ring mod Oh, that's getting more annoying. All right, what else does uh, Ultra Beat have to offer us as far as um, manglers? Um, we may have to go to another plugin for this. Um, yeah, let's do that. All right, well, uh, let's try something we haven't used yet. Um, ring shifter. You can't get some really annoying sounds with this. I don't want a really uh, pitched or crazy one. Roof shadow. Nah. Don't want the delay. Try that. Yeah, 
Okay, that's getting better. <laughs> that's even better. Okay, so let's uh let's check some big reverb on there. Whoops, logic plugins. Stick uh space designer on there, and we're gonna go for a big one. Now, is this still in key? Uh, you know what I've just done? I've just uh, tweaked up the pitch bend here. And uh, Ultra Beat doesn't respond to pitch bend. So much for that. So what I'm going to do now is another trick. Let's just uh, let's just lay this down, record it to audio, and then we'll load it into a sampler, and we can go bananas with pitch bend and all that other stuff. So I will uh, go here, get my pencil tool, and playing a C two. There it is. I'll just draw in a note. There it is, and we'll just call this uh, a noyo. And we can do this, bounce in place. Let's call this Anoyo, and you can be in a new track. Yeah, we don't really want that. Normalize. Yeah, why not? And yeah, we'll delete. Well, I will leave a source. We might want to uh, muck with it later. There we go. So now we have Anoyo. And we can actually load that straight into a uh, sampler so we just have to go down to convert it to sampler track and regions sure why not okay so now we have Anoya one and Anoya one is not doing anything because right this is triggering on c minus two just bring it up to a C2, hello. Let's drag it up this way. In fact, I want to be able to play it in different pitches. So let's just do this. So this blue bar, as you've guessed already, uh, represents the keys that will uh, play the sample. As soon as I get up there, of course it doesn't play the sample. And I've made the root note C, but it's actually an A, so I will go like that. So that way, when we're actually playing an A on the keyboard, it will be an A, and when we're playing a C, it'll be a C. Okay, so Anoyo, yes. Save Anoyo. Close that. And we can close that. And now you can hear Anoyo responds to pitch bend. So let's make it a little bit bigger than this. We can turn on. Yeah, that's the right one. There we go. Sometimes it's the simple things. There, that sounds like a certain famous DJ that's currently playing out. Right? So, let's get into it. Uh, we're not going to do something that nasty, but uh, we'll see what we can crank up with the reverbs and whatnot on here. 
and we'll move the space designer over there. And actually, sorry, wrong channel. Audio two, we don't really need anymore. That was just the one that we did the bounce in place to. So I can go select it, press delete, and then delete again. And yeah, we might as well get rid of the ultra beat. And now we will just call this Anoyo. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's stick a limiter. Actually, we'll, we might as well just, uh, stick a bit crusher on it and just limit it. Sonic Fidelity is not the name of the game today. Wow. All right. So I don't want that hideous clipping sound because that'll be really, really nasty when it comes to the final mix down. But I do want it a little bit. Now, what we could also try is setting up a loop. Now, probably this is not going to work, but it never hurts to try, right? So, I'm going to go to the uh, view menu, and uh, here we can see the sample, and uh, this lets you numerically set the start and the end of the sample if you want to do some trimming. Um, if you look in this window, you can see that we've got the whole sample selected and the loop brace is disabled. So if I go and enable loop here, then close this window down. Double click this again. Now we have, or we should have, loop marker here. Right, we don't because by default. Oh, wow. That worked out better than I could have anticipated. Okay. Let's, uh, let's save that. All right, that is exactly the sound that uh, is probably going to fit in quite nicely with this. All right, my apologies to everybody, but this is what's cool. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's record some stuff, okay? Uh, 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 delete that. And I'm going to turn this down just so we can hear uh, the bass and everything. And I'm going to slow this down a bit. And right. Doki. So, let's hear what we've got here. Now, I can't really quantize these to 16ths because I was playing... Uh, or was I? thought I had some triplets in there, but maybe not. Let's listen. That, uh, that part is solid uh, cheese ball gold up there. Um, but in here, it gets a bit uh, 
it gets a bit repetitive between 22 and 24. This part's all right, but uh, I might want to do, let's move this out of the way. And I'll just record uh, another little bit, and then we can chop two bars out of it and transplant them in there. Okay, so lower that back down. And start recording. Yeah, okay, that's what I'll use. I was looking for the right uh, the right note to use that wasn't one of these A's. Musical typing. Okay, here we go. That's going to be it. This uh that F to the E. To the E. All right, start it up again. Whoa. I'm in the wrong business. Okay, let's uh, let's close down musical typing, and then I'll move Anoyo over there. This is that new one, and actually, this is a. Uh, I think this is probably better than this one. So let's um, let's chop and change them. Maybe we can use both. So first off, I'm gonna do some quantizing with this one because there were some that were a little off. Um, that's another nice thing about playing slow is that uh, you're usually a lot more on the beat if you've got a little bit of extra time to think ahead of uh, about what notes you're going to play. So. See, now I don't know, because they're both, this one's kind of got a more skippy feel to it than this one does. And uh, it's kind of jarring when you go from this first one to the second one. So I wonder if we can chop it up like this and drop one bar in after that, something like this. <laughs> That'll work out all right, because that's almost like a little call and response thing where you got like skippy, 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 and then on the beat, on the beat, skippy, skippy, skippy. Except that sounds more like a fill. So we can put that over there. And I'll just uh, marquee select that, drag it over. Drag one of these over as well. And hang on. Call this uh, normal. And this one, Skippy. And right, Skippy. You go there. Normal, you go there. Maybe we have the Skippy there with that fill. Yeah, all right. All right, and then the, that one. Skippy and then a normal. 
And then we can take another Skippy. And then we'll have the normal fill. Let's see how that goes. at all so we can go like that replace that one nah all right we're gonna get rid of this one too we'll have to pretty much follow the same two and then uh these will be a little bit different. The fills will be different. I think that'll work out. So what I've done there is uh, I've double dipped the compressor. Um, I felt that the first one just wasn't uh, smashing it enough. So I just threw another one on and uh, it sounds like this now. So I'm doing the old thing where you sweep up a little bit to hear the nasty frequencies and then uh, cut them out. Now this is... Um, this is asking for some multiband compression because when we do that one wah, 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 and it goes up there, it gets a bit piercing and I could adjust the, um, now that I think about it, the key follow on the filter here and I do that. Multiband should usually be used as the uh, last resort. If we can modify it at the source, that's the best, uh, the best solution. So I'll, uh, I'm just going to loop up this one bit here. That's that one that is the, uh, the horrible high frequencies. Right. 
So it's the bit crusher that is generating that. Um, so what we could do is uh, get the volume to lower on higher notes. See, right now I'm playing up that octave. So we can adjust the key scale. No, that's not it. Key scale is not having the effect that I want. So let's try and just lower the, uh, the note volume themselves. Okay, so what I've done is I've put a limiter instead of the bit crusher. I really didn't like the nastiness that that uh, bit crusher was putting out. So I stuck a limiter beforehand before it goes into the uh, space designer. And then I stuck another limiter after the EQ because the way we've got the EQ set here, we were generating some massive peaks. So I've got another limiter after that and then a compressor that's side chained and another side chained compressor. So uh, forget everything you read about in the uh, engineering manuals because we've just kind of broke all the rules but it sounds or it will sound like i wanted it to Okay, so now that that real harshness in the top end is gone, we can uh, we can boost a little bit of the highs. And I notice I'm still filtering off the real highs because that uh, that's going to get really annoying. Um, and I know annoying is the name of the game, but there's annoying, and then there's um, hurting your ears, annoying. Really, it's the uh, it's the reverb that's doing most of the heavy lifting here. Okay, so I think um, I'm going to leave the second compressor off after uh, after we tone down the high frequencies by getting rid of the uh, bit crusher. I didn't feel the need for it anymore. I wonder if there's something else we want to do to it. I don't think we're going to do anything right now. We'll see how it fits in the mix later on. I'll end the video here and uh, we'll move on.